And now it's time to take a look at gases. Gases are phase of matter where the molecules are spread so incredibly far apart that's just incredibly crazy. Gases exert what is called pressure. Pressure is force exerted over an area. Use the force, Luke. Force exerted over an area. More force. You see, if you have smaller area, you're going to exert more pressure if you exert the same amount of force. What would you rather be stepped on? The 300 pound person wearing flat shoes or stiletto heels? Obviously, you want that 300 pounds to be spread out over as wide an area as possible. That's called pressure. Seriously, you want her stepping on you with stiletto heels? I don't think so! So how do you measure pressure? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Air pressure, atmospheric pressure, is measured using a device called a barometer. And what this is, is a hollow glass tube that's had all the air removed from it. So there's no air pressure pushing down on the inside of the glass tube. Any pressure is going to come strictly from outside. Into this you put some sort of liquid. Mercury is most commonly used, although there are health hazards associated with mercury. The mercury metal, being very, very heavy, the air pressure pushes down with a force of about 14.7 pounds per square inch. In other words, over every square inch of that mercury, it's pushing down with a force of about 14.7 pounds. Alright, that's a lot. Now, that force pushing down on the mercury pushes the mercury up into the tube. Why? Because there's nothing in the tube to push back. The mercury's path of least resistance is to go up the tube. Now, a standard atmosphere of pressure is enough to push that up 29.92 inches high. That's how high the column of mercury in this tube will be. Or, since we're doing this in metric, 760 millimeters. About that high. 760 millimeters of pressure. That's why they often say on the Weather Channel that the pressure is either rising or it's falling because literally that's what it's doing. When more air pressure pushes down on here, it pushes the mercury higher. That's why it's measured in inches. Do you know that? The pressure is 30.01 inches and falling. Well, that means that there's less pressure pushing down, so the height of the mercury column will go down. 760 millimeters worth of pressure is also referred to as 760 Tor, named after Evangelista Torricelli. It's also referred to as 1.00 atmospheres, and the atmosphere is a standard unit of pressure. We're going to be using atmospheres and kilopascals in this class. 101.3 kilopascals. Kilopascals is a metric unit of pressure. 101.3 kilopascals is 1.00 atmosphere. So it's very convenient to convert back and forth. If you want to go from atmospheres to kilopascals, look, it's 101.3 times bigger. Multiply by 101.3. And if you want to go the other way, from kilopascals to atmospheres, divide by 101.3. You're going to need to convert back and forth between when we do some math with gases. We call it gas math. If the gas is confined, we use a device called a manometer. A BP cuff is called a sphygmomanometer, and a pressure gauge is what's used on gas cylinders. You can also use one of these things to find out the tire pressure inside your bicycle or automotive tire. Now the greatest pressure drop ever recorded was on June 24th of 2003 in what was once the town of Manchester, South Dakota. Storm chaser named Tim Samaras put out a probe that recorded a 100 millibar drop or a 10 kilopascal drop over the space of 5 seconds as this F4 tornado passed over it. Here's a picture of the probe. Here's a picture of the tornado before it hit the town. Here's a picture of the tornado after it left the town. Here's a video still of the tornado destroying a house. And this photo outlines the actual damage path of this incredibly violent tornado. If you see a tornado on the Weather Channel, a lot of times it's this tornado. It's a very famous tornado.